Hey folks, we're at the world famous Raid Studios and we're going to be checking out the Dracula Visions uh, Raid Gallery. Uh, so I'm super psyched about this. We have a number of prints, but we also have a number of original pieces in here. So what we're going to do is to give you the royal tour. Uh, if you do want to check it out in person, which I highly recommend, uh, come down to the Raid Studios. Uh, I think it closes at 6 o'clock. We'll give you the exact timings, but before 6 o'clock. Uh, and you can see these pieces as well. Uh, not only can you see them, but you could order up some uh, prints and you could also order up or pay for some of the original pieces of art as well. So check that out. Let's do the tour. <laughs> At the corner of Roncesville and uh, Queen. Come on down. What do we have here, Martin? All right, so our first piece here is, uh, it's funny, first piece is actually the end of the book. Uh, <laughs> so this is by Gabe Sapienza. So this sort of represents uh, Dracula in his final minutes. Um, and he absolutely captured it beautifully. So very happy with this piece. So Gabe Sapienza knocked it out of the park. Beautiful piece. And uh, also your mother's favorite piece. My mother's favorite piece. So Gabe, check it out. <laughs> We're gonna have to get a print for my mom and you're gonna have to sign it. <laughs> All right, so this is another piece. Um, again, a beautiful painting. So this one, again, what we were doing with Dracula Visions is we weren't recreating the Dracula novel. Uh, we were taking inspiration from some of the passages from the novel. So this piece here is um, based on the, you know, the famous quote, uh, blood is life and the idea here is the artist took uh, Steve McGinnis took um, some historical um, wear at the time and sort of based it a little bit more on Vlad the Impaler or Vlad Tepes um, but also of course brought in the macabre so you could see he added in the uh, the candles and of course the blood <laughs> and uh, again uh, the original piece this is a print but the original piece is a very large beautiful uh, painted piece so a great addition to the book okay. uh, yes okay so Gerhard uh, Gerhard is a is a uh, artist that I wanted originally on this from the very beginning. Best uh, known for uh, Service, the known. background artist of uh, Service the Aardvark. Absolutely, and um, it took a few back and forth uh, for him to get to get on the project, but he decided to do it. Um, and when we talked about it originally, um, you know, he's you know he's going back and forth with some ideas. In my mind, though, I I knew I really wanted him to do Dracula's Castle from the beginning. Uh, because that is absolutely his strength and he did such a great job uh, doing Dracula's castle based on um, well based on uh, Bram Castle so this is actually based on a, an actual castle uh, that exists and you could go visit okay ah uh, yes so Sean Daly so this is Sean Daly's piece so Sean Daly's piece here um, I think he, uh, the perspective is just genius. So when he, when we talked about doing his piece, we were talking about the beginning of the novel when Dracula takes Harker to uh, to the castle. Um, of course, they don't know that Dracula is actually the stagecoach uh, driver. Um, so rather than your sort of regular side on with the with the uh, with the stagecoach, he decided to do an over the shoulder view, which I think is just genius. Uh, so you can see, you know, obviously the teasing of the, <laughs> the Dracula. Um, you have the horses, and then of course you have the path leading up to the castle here. So a really beautiful piece by Sean Daly. Uh, all uh, painted as well. Genius. Awesome. Okay, uh, this is uh, by Sandy Carruthers. Uh, Sandy Carruthers was one of those artists that knew right from the start what they wanted to do for their piece. Uh, essentially, uh, he wanted to do um, the picture of the brides. The brides were very popular by, with our artists. One of many artists <laughs> who were fighting over uh, who would get to do the brides. Exactly. 
Um, and he did this amazing sort of two-tone, you know, blue uh, moonlight type uh, piece where you could see the, the moonlight come through uh, the glass panes. Uh, you know, a little little embellishments like the little bat on the top here, which are really cool. And then of course you have the brides um, and Jonathan, of course, uh, <laughs> with a shocked look on his face. Definitely an <laughs> iconic scene from uh, the book. Absolutely, yeah. But I just I just love this sort of window treatment that he did. No, gorgeous composition. Really great piece. Okay, all right. Slightly larger piece here. Slightly larger piece. This is the original uh, inked, so um, pencil and ink piece by Andy Dorland. So um, he also went a very di different direction uh, than he was originally going into, and he, he really knocked this out as well. Um, so of course you could see in the background you have the you have the um, sort of the crypt. Um, he did a beautiful job on you know doing the angels up in here. Um, I love, he calls it the umbrella piece, which is very interesting because <laughs> of the gentleman with the umbrella here. But uh, yeah, really great. And when you see this in color, it really, it really pops in color. Um, it's a, a very dark piece. Absolutely. Strong uh, composition in black and white as well. So now for something a little different. Um, so this is uh, Mr. Eric Better. This is a, an actual digital piece that he put together. Um, again, we have uh, quite a variety in some of the pieces that we've done for the book. Some are uh, interpretations that are very sort of close to the, to the word of the novel. Some of them are really interpretive and this is maybe one of the interpretive pieces. This is uh, Mina. Um, again, very visceral piece. Uh, you could see uh, a lot of different styles in here, um, and a lot of, I, I don't even know how he did half of this stuff, to be honest. There's uh, some fine art elements, and yeah. also the, a degree of, I, I want to say, like, high fashion yes. illustration in there. That's that's a great way to put it, yeah, that's fantastic. Yeah, it, it almost looks like a, a fashion piece, but, you know, gone, gone wild, <laughs> <laughs> so to speak. Yeah, I really love this piece, very cool. And just uh, to remind people that uh, this entire awesome wall here are uh, digital prints, so they're all available as okay. very reasonably priced prints. Yeah, with the exception of uh, Andy's, you could also get the print, but the, that's the original one there. Okay, all right, so let's talk about this one. Uh, so this is Katie Sawatsky. Uh, so it's Katie Sawatsky's piece, again, um, very similar to Eddie, uh, uh, Eric, Eric Vetter, sorry, I said Eric, Eric Vetter's um, uh, piece where it's more interpretive, um, but she did such a fantastic job. And it's funny that they're both together because uh, during the campaign, uh, Eric suggested that uh, due to the nature of Katie's piece, it would make a fantastic t-shirt. Yeah, the sil a silk screen, silk screen given the limited color palette. Yeah, so there's, there's essentially four colors here, right? So. Mm -hmm. um, so I said, yeah, you know what, that's a great, I, I wasn't planning on doing t-shirts, uh, but after he mentioned that, I said, you yeah, know, that's, that's genius. Um, and I've actually already printed a, a small run and it looked amazing. And a lot of the artists like bought them up immediately. So they are available on the Kickstarter as well, but check it out. Um, what I also want to do with the t-shirts is, um, I'm not a big fan of having a lot of uh, like wording on t-shirts and things like that, you know, mm -hmm. like, this is fine, but, um, I wanted it to really showcase the art. So what we did is for the t-shirt, it's just the art. There's no Dracula Visions on it. There's no uh, slam press tomes. It's just an art piece. So that was the phenomenal thing, the fact yeah, that- And it's beautiful. It's an art piece unto itself. Exactly. All right. Ah, yes. Chris Campana, our friend from one of the, uh, one of our US contributors <laughs> from New Jersey. So Chris Campana, he comes from uh, more of a fantasy type background. Uh, so as you can see in, the, in this piece, again, more of an interpretation talking about, um, you know, fighting of evil versus evil. And uh, this to me is a little, feels a little bit more almost Marvel classic. Or even uh, for me, He-Man and the Masters of the Universe is kind of a, a Big real... Big influence uh, of, of Chris Campana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so he's got, he's got your, your Templ Templar Knight and of course Dracula brooding in the background. Great piece. All right. All right, so this one, uh, one of the more naughty pieces <laughs> <laughs> by Raid member 
uh, Kyle Smith. So Kyle Smith uh, did a great job here. Uh, again, as we mentioned earlier, the the brides were very, very popular. Absolutely. Um, and he just knocked this one out of the park. Very, very visceral, as you can see. Um, of course, Jonathan uh, being a victim of the brides uh, in the boudoir. <laughs> I do love the fact that all our brides pieces uh, are very different from each other. That's they the are. one fantastic thing about uh, seeing a certain subject matter repeated. Absolutely. I feel like we could have done a whole book with the brides <laughs> and they would have looked all different. There you so, go. Dracula uh, Visions uh, Volume 2. <laughs> there you go. Maybe. Maybe. Okay, so now uh, this is actually an original watercolor piece that we have up in the gallery right now uh, by Becca Kinsey. Um, and I just love the, the overall idea of this piece. So it was originally done in, originally done in pencil. Uh, so there's pencil, there's ink, there's, it's really multimedia. Uh, it's, um, it's watercolor. And the whole idea here, uh, as you could probably interpret, uh, is uh, Mina. Uh, again, being um, feasted on by Dracula, and then but you could see sort of the inner anguish of uh, of Mina, what's happening in her mind um, <clears throat> as she's sort of stoic there, as as the horrific uh, things are happening to her. Uh, I think it's really great, and this is the piece uh, that we got to do the uh, 3D model with mm -hmm. uh, by Amanda Daly. And kudos to uh, Amanda too for being able to interpret a more conceptual piece like this as a as a 3D sculpture. Yeah, yeah, really, really something else, and and she pulled it off. It's really great. She has the entire background. Go check it on the Kickstarter. Um, we have a lot of pictures of it, but she has the whole entire background as well as almost um, almost four figures in one, mm -hmm. <laughs> but all molded together. It's really yeah, great. the mist even really as a great. as a sculptural element, it, it's yeah. phenomenal. Yeah, fantastic. Check it out. All right, this one here, another larger piece. Uh, I think Casey Parsons does this on purpose because he always wants to go up in this wall here. <laughs> <laughs> so as you come through the door, you see Casey's. Anyway, um, well deserved. Um, again, this is an extremely creepy piece. This is all done with, uh, this is all a painted, so I think pencil, ink, paint, all the way through. Um, again, this is an absolute uh, nightmare type piece. I love his interpretation of the bestial Dracula. Um, and then as you can see the expression uh, in, in the uh, sleeping person um, of, of the nightmare and the un uneasy rest, so to speak. Really great, really great. Yeah, Casey's stuff is always wonderful and sublime and the subtlety of some of the stuff, you can just uh, sort of stare at that piece for a little while. Especially the difference between a printed work and actual uh, uh, physical artwork. This is, this is the one thing where you can come in and yeah. uh, just see the hand of the artist at work. Absolutely. Can you zoom in at all on, on the eyes? The, the eyes are really something pretty stunning on this piece. They really, they, they follow you. Yeah, no, they, <laughs> they absolutely pop as well. That one little tiny element in an otherwise yeah. monochromatic piece. Yeah. Stunning. Really great. Okay, and here we have uh, a bit of an overview of the gallery. Uh, talks about the various works, talks about, um, again, Slam Press Tomes, the uh, publishing uh, company that I'm, I'm launching. Uh, and this is, of course, our first kickoff book, hopefully of many. Um, and uh, it talks about uh, over, you know, um, two dozen original interpretations of Dracula. Um, of course, plus the QR code. Plus the QR code, it'll take you right to the Kickstarter, which only at this point has four days left. So if you're going to get on it, get on it right now. Um, you're not going to want to miss out on this. This is this is a, a fantastic art book that you'll be proud to have on your coffee table or on your shelf. course you could visit the wonderful uh, coffee bar that's here a lot of specialty coffees one of my favorites is the empanadas that they serve here uh, I generally get the empanadas when I come every time as you can see <laughs> <laughs> the empanadas are amazing, the empanadas are amazing. Uh, what are some of the sort of specialty things that you that you do here 
some of the specialty coffees? Well, uh, specialty here is mostly like matcha tea. So it's like a South American uh, energetic kind of tea. So that's our kind of a trademark. But we also have like amazing coffee, a beautiful coffee machine. <laughs> yes, amazing. Good stuff. So check it out. When you're coming down, have a coffee, do a walkabout. Of course, you could also uh, purchase some of the uh, rave published uh, publications or publications, not necessarily by rave, but by a lot of the rave members. Of course, you can come down and purchase some of those as well as some prints as well. You can see uh, Force Folk and Mr. Monster uh, just released. And then on the top, a little magazine called Cauldron for mature That's readers only. About that one, Sam? Uh, I do, I do, and look at those uh, stunning covers Wait, by. Uh, yeah, it is, and look at those stunning covers by Casey Parsons and uh, and Adam Gorm. Excellent. Good stuff. Okay, so on this wall here, we have a lot of the uh, original pieces, black and white. Uh, generally, they are pencil and inked. Uh, in the book, most of these pieces are going to be um, colored, digitally colored. Okay, so. Uh, with the exception of one, they will all be digitally covered, uh, colored, sorry. Uh, so this one here is Ron Sutton's piece. Uh, Ron knew again exactly what he wanted to do from the beginning. He was uh, very territorial <laughs> about, about the scene that he wanted to do. Um, and he, you know, obviously this was in his head from the, from the start. Ron, of course, best known for his run on Elvira, which was yes. what was kind of exciting about getting Ron on board. So this uh, is uh, more of a literal representation of the scene where um, obviously the, the brides were attacking Jonathan and then Dracula comes in uh, and then sort of shoes them off saying that, that uh, Jonathan belongs to him. So, um, but captured just, just incredibly. And again, another completely dynamic and, and different approach to the brides. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, really great. Okay. This one here, um, long time, I'm a long time fan of Mr. Mike Ruth. Um, he's one of the artists that I had to have on this project. Uh, it's one of the artists that I couldn't imagine doing the project without. Um, and his interpretation, I've never seen this interpretation of the famous uh, line, listen to the creatures of the night. <laughs> um, I mean, obviously, you know, this is this thing, but what he did is he, out of the mist, you could see all the various creatures of the night. Um, come, you know, sort of interpreted off the side uh, while an aging Dracula uh, is out the window, uh, giving a bit of a side eye. <laughs> and I'm almost seeing sort of a, a transformative uh, approach yes. to it as well with uh, him almost uh, transmogrifying uh, in, a, in an abstract kind of way. Absolutely. Yeah, love it. Just love it. Okay. Mr. Adam Gorham, so this is the black and white original version of the cover of Dracula Visions and um, again this is available in two, two different versions. The uh, colorized version which is our standard Dracula Visions cover and then of course because we found that the black and white was so stunning we almost went black and white from the beginning I'll tell you. Yeah, no. Uh, it, was, it, was, it, was, it was a tough choice. It was a tough choice. Um, but such a tough choice, we decided to do both. So uh, we do have a, what they call a virgin cover, which does not have any of the dressing on it, um, and it'll be this cover itself. And um, when he originally showed this, like the, the whole team was blown away. Um, mm -hmm. You know, we have the sort of ethereal bat wings coming out, um, which, which are subtle, right? Because it really just shows sort of the shape in the background. Um, the eyes really pop, obviously. And when he originally showed us, we did, he didn't have the background, and then he added the background, which made it even, even pop further and give it a lot more depth. Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's just fantastic. And I think you were saying that um, it's a very different style than Adam's regular. Yeah, it's a certain... I, I, I'm saying uh, there's, there's a degree of expressionism in here that uh, I think he's been playing with. It's, it's yeah, quite wonderful and, and quite subtle, but I'm really loving it. And the other thing is, I guess, uh, this piece is one of the few that's not available for sale, is it? It is some not lucky, <laughs> Some lucky uh, person uh, uh, snatched this one up right away. I had to have a souvenir. <laughs> <laughs> Another 
piece, uh, which is, again, more of a literal interpretation. This is by Jeff Ursherwood, uh, where we have, of course, uh, Lucy um, in all her vampiric glory here. <laughs> um, and with a lot of these, again, these are all originals. You could come in. If you zoom in, you could really see the detail that have been put into these pieces. Um, look, the incredible line work, um, the line work, uh, the hatching, etc. Just, just incredible. Just Even incredible. the way he spotted the blacks in there as well. It's yeah. Very, very. Uh, and it's a very dynamic piece. I, I love the way that he, he sort of captured this this scene mm -hmm. um, in the cemetery uh, with Lucy, and, and you could see sort of the <laughs> the fear and and the the anguish in the faces of the folks that are there. Another very iconic scene captured captured beautifully, and uh, Jeff, of course, is a Marvel and uh, DC artist. He is, yeah, he's well known for, for Conan, for his uh, Doctor Strange. Um, yeah, yeah, and this piece in particular, this is one of the very, I think this might be the only black and white piece in the whole book. So uh, we decided to keep it in black and white because we did find it very stunning in the way it was. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, one of the other, I almost want to say they're all showcase pieces. <laughs> this is one that we, we used a lot. Um, Absolutely, yeah. yeah. So uh, this is by Sam Agro, uh, who is uh, an incredible like sort of veteran uh, artist. And um, when we originally talked about his piece, we were sort of, you know, going back and forth with different uh, scenes from the book. My personal favorite scene is The Voyage of the Demeter. Um, and mine as well, coincidentally. Like, it's yeah. such a great, compelling scene. Yeah, I think there's a movie coming. Um, but anyway, um, so when we talked about it, The Voyage of the Demeter, uh, if you're not too familiar with it, essentially it's when uh, Dracula is uh, taking his sea voyage um, from Transylvania to London. And, and what happens is it's all a, a series of different logs um, from the ship captain and different folks from the ship. And what happens is on a daily basis, the people start disappearing. <laughs> so we know, you know, something bad is happening on this ship. Dracula packed a few lunches. He did, he did, uh, to go. So what happened is at the end, uh, they had the ship captain alone. He's, he, he lashed himself to the wheel. Um, he's got his cross, as you can see here, uh, around his neck, lashed to the wheel. Um, and uh, that's how they arrive in London. And but, uh, this one was used as a statue bust as well. This was, yeah. We found this was a really great interpretation of Dracula as well. Um, the interpretation from the book, again, very different than what we see is sort of the Bella Lugosi um, uh, type, type interpretations, where this is actually a lot closer to the description in the book. Mm -hmm. um, sort of not the older, older Dracula, sort of the mid Dracula. You know, he's got his, he's got his mustache, <laughs> a defining feature. Uh, he's described as, you know, wearing black robes. Um, and yeah, so this, I think he sort of captured everything here. The Demeter, the captain, and of course, uh, Dracula in, in his guises. Beautiful piece. Okay, so this one here, um, uh, the final piece that's in the gallery, is uh, from artist Hoche Anderson, and I was really, really happy to have him aboard the project as well. Critically uh, acclaimed darling of uh, of the Fantagraphics uh, Martin Luther King biography, and now uh, Luke Cage at Marvel. Yeah, just he's just been brought on to do Luke Cage, uh, so somehow we got him in between, <laughs> <laughs> just in the right timing. This is an original piece uh, painted, and interesting enough. Uh, this is actually painted on a wooden board. It's not uh, your typical canvas, which gives it a very different feel. And if you look closely, uh, obviously you could see the various um, lines of, of the wooden board itself. Yeah, the grain. The, the grain. grain is part of the art, which is which is <clears throat> phenomenal. Yes. So uh, Hoji Anderson, again, went more um, historical with this piece as well. Very close to the Vlad Tepe's uh, the original uh, historical figure that Dracula is loosely based on. Yes, uh, with a twist. <laughs> with a heart. 
<laughs> yeah, so uh, again, another beautiful piece. Um, I also really love, it, you know, you're obviously getting the view from underneath um, as he sort of looks down upon you and potentially you could consider this as you, you being one of Dracula's victims <laughs> with the still beating heart. Um, at least that's the way I see it. But anyway, uh, another beautiful piece. You could come down, check it out. All these pieces, with the exception of the cover, which I own, uh, are on sale. So you could pick up the original piece while you're down here. Or uh, any of number of prints that they have as well yeah. for the um, digital pieces. And if you don't want to, yeah, you could also get prints of any of these, even the original ones you could get prints of. Uh, so these are also available if you, you know, um, obviously the originals would be more expensive. Mm -hmm. but you could get a print of these if you so wish, so you can still have this up on your wall. Yeah, um, essentially a, a Gickly that uh, is, is extremely affordable. Okay, so we found these two people on the street. We thought that we'd bring them in and <laughs> check out the, I'm just kidding. These are my parents. <laughs> <laughs> these are my parents and uh, I wanted to bring them down here to see, basically to show off. Um, and uh, show them what their son has done um, in conjunction, of course, with a number of artists uh, from Reed and other artists outside. Uh, so I think we're going to have just a very quick chat about first impressions on, on what you think of the show. I think it's fascinating. I mean, if you read the book and you have your own interpretation of what you think happened, but then you look at these, these drawings, these and you think, oh my goodness, there's more to it than that. How they manage to convey so much in a few strokes, it's just marvelous. Every time you look at it, you find something else you can think about. I think it's beautiful. It is wonderful. Yeah. I think we're gonna get my mom to do the next uh, walk around. Yeah, no, absolutely. <laughs> Curatorially, that was, that was absolutely brilliant. And I love the fact that your mom has read Dracula. That's right. Yeah. That is no, fantastic. Yeah, we, we used to watch. Uh, we used to watch a lot of horror movies. Oh wow! Uh, that's probably where my love of horror came from. From from mom. From mom. Yeah, oh, yeah. that's yeah. terrific. We used to work late, and my mom used to stay up late so they could see my dad when he get home, and uh, we would watch all sorts of you know those classic horror films. I get scared, and then. We don't be scared. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are what are Mrs. Slam Duncan's uh, favorite horror movies? My favorite. Yeah. Oh my goodness, that's hard because there's so many. I always like Candyman. 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 Candyman.
Yeah, to be continued. <laughs> and which is which is your favorite? We'll go over that again. The first one, the one with Dracula's bed. That's the one. So, Gabe, if you're watching, you're gonna have to sign one of those. <laughs> and uh, what's your favorite, sir? Uh, my favorite? Yeah. Um, well, I like the the one with Dracula looking back at. On the, with the carriage. Oh yeah, that one's good too. Uh, Sean oh, Sean Daly's. Oh, yeah, yeah, the point of view one. Exactly. Queen and Roncesville, the uh, raid gallery and coffee shop right here. All right, come by and check it out, folks. Four days left on the Kickstarter. Check it out. Thanks, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the tour.